Yo, what's going on, G.Dot family? You already know it's your boy, G.Dot TZ, back in it with another baggy ass VZ featuring my thoinky, you know what I'm saying? So, what up, do that say, baby? I'm out here listening to the Mo3 documentary. Well, not documentary, the story, you feel me? Because I heard he was bullying niggas, pulling up on niggas, pressing niggas, beating niggas, slapping niggas, shooting niggas. I heard he was doing everything under the sun to these motherfuckers. In North Dallas, you feel me? So I don't know the truth. We're gonna figure it out today. We're gonna put, put two and two together and try to piece that whole together. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Don't forget to follow a nigga on Instagram, Guapboy G. Dot, and Twitter, Guapboy G. Dot. Go ahead and get straight into this video, man. See if we can put the pieces together on Photon Gray. Mo3 was one of the hottest rappers in Dallas, and on his way to the mainstream. But in okay. 2020, he was tragically shot down in broad daylight. Right. His death made headlines everywhere. Most people have no idea about the deadly beef that led up to it. Hell no, nah, today, don't. we're breaking down the wild story of Mo3 and the see what's going on. Dallas and two. Let's get right into it. Mo3 had a crazy come up in North Dallas. His mom and dad split when he was a kid, and Mo3 was surrounded by poverty and violence. On the track all the way down, he right. said, you ain't write my song, so leave me alone. Right. I held it down on my own. And in an interview, he explained that the line came from growing up with nothing. When his mom's electricity would get shut off, Mo3 would sleep outside in the Texas heat, and they had to use candles for light. God Mo3 damn. didn't have a lot of options as a kid in that environment. So he hopped off the porch and got involved with the streets at a young age. Mo3 said he stole his- See, that's why I don't be liking because the hood be so impoverished and f up. Niggas don't be having no choice but jump off that porch and make some money because if you 13, you 12, 11, 10, however old you is, you under 16, you can't get no regular job, how else you finna get some cho-cho? Niggas ain't finna be cutting grass and blowing leaves forever. You finna that season though, first of all. You can only do that every like two weeks, one week, and then even then you, you begging niggas to pay you, bro. You're not getting paid that much, bro. So it be up. Sometimes niggas gotta jump off that porch to pay them bills, man. His gun when he was 12 and started walking around with it. He didn't have a magazine for it though, and later got caught and had it taken away. He caught his first robbery charge at 14, and spent the next few years going through every correctional facility Dallas ever built, according God to damn. him. Mo3 was only 15 when he started getting into the shootout. In an interview, he couldn't even remember how many times he had been shot at. Damn. All the violence never made him leave the streets or switch up how he moved. It was clear that Mo3 was headed to jail or the grave, even though he was just a teenager. And he ended up getting locked up at 17 and had to settle down for a while. He caught four aggravated robbery charges and was facing some serious time. Mo3's mom tried to help him beat the case, and she ended up losing everything because of it. Her house and car were both taken, and she ended up having to live with her sister while all the legal fees racked up. Mo3 ah, was handed down a 10 year sentence. Before he was shipped off to prison, his dad visited him in the county jail and changed everything. Mo3's dad asked him what he was going to do after he got out, and Mo3 didn't really have an answer. School didn't work out for him, he didn't have any job skills, and the only option he saw was going back to the streets. But instead of jumping right back into the mix, Mo3's dad told him he should become a rapper. He said instead of getting back in the streets, Mo3 should just rap about the things he had already done. Mo3 never even thought about making a career out of music, but he had been rapping and singing his whole life. See, that's why we need more dads in the world, bro. We need more fathers, especially black fathers, to stay in the household because that just changed that nigga whole trajectory in life. If he never told him to start rapping, who knows if he would even took this shit serious? Who knows if he would have got to where he is right now? He took that shit serious because Pops told him, you feel me? And Pops are still Pops no matter what's going on. So we need more black fathers in the household, bro. If he was in a houseboat, not saying he wasn't, if he was probably in a houseboat holding that shit down, this would have never happened. He would have never been in the streets and he would never have to even start rapping and he never would have, you know what I'm saying? His mom had him singing in the church choir and he would rap for his dad's friends whenever he went there. Back then, Dallas didn't have a big rap scene though. So Mo3 never even tried to take it seriously. That all changed. He got oh, bro, prison. internet. Mo3 only served two years and got released for good behavior. For he real? came out with no money in his pockets. That's crazy. He a lucky break because his cousin owned a recording studio. Mo3's cousin was locked up at the time, but he put Mo3 in contact with the dudes who were running the spot to let him use the booth for free. The first track he dropped was a remix of Mr. Lucci's track, Half Step. Mr. Lucci is a legend in the Dallas rap scene, uh. and a producer working in the studio with Mo3 didn't even want to be involved at first. He thought remixing the track f up a Dallas classic. He was like, man, hell nah, bro. Like, I don't wanna be a part of this shit. Like, fam, you finna f up a Dallas classic. But after Mo3 hopped in the booth and laid it down, everyone knew it was a hit. Mo3 dropped his first project in 2014 and was already building a buzz in the city. He kept grinding and releasing music, and after a couple of years in the game, he signed a deal with Epic Records. It should have been a huge win, but then, Everything fell apart after Mo3 was involved in a shooting in 2017. Mm. It's not clear exactly how it all went down, 
But rumors say Mo3 was in the same club as Go Yayo when it happened. They allegedly had issues before, but that night the situation popped off, two people got shot. Luckily, Mo3 made it out alive, but he was booked for the shooting and was facing 13 years in prison. The charges were eventually dropped, but the situation made Epic get cold feet, and Mo3 was on his own again in the industry. Mm. Around the same time, Yellow Beezy was popping off in the Dallas rap scene too. He had been releasing music since he was 14, but in 2017, he blew up with the track That's On Me and charted on the Billboard Hot 100. Yellow Beezy and Mo3 didn't have issues back in the day, and Yellow even ranked Mo3 as one of the top five rappers in the city. They have mutual homies too, like Trap Boy Freddy, who Mo3 linked up with on the track Landlord. So if all these niggas was cool and all these niggas was linking up and everything was Gucci two times, tell it to be two times, how the hell did y'all start getting into it and start beefing for real? That's what I want to know because everything looked like it was just cool to me. So I'm trying to figure out how the hell y'all niggas started really getting into it and started beefing and all this crazy shit because like y'all was doing songs together, y'all was chilling, y'all leave family, like what's going on? Everything was cool at first, but then Yellow started beefing with Mo3's homie, Roy Lee. Uh, Lee yeah. was a comedian from Dallas who started roasting Yellow on social media after Yellow's crew allegedly jumped him at a nightclub. It's not clear who started the issue, but Lee was on Yellow's head. There was rumors that Mo3 and Yellow had beef too, but Mo3 allegedly reached out to him and he squashed it. But at the same time, Mo3's homie Roy Lee was keeping the pressure on Yellow. And then everything got messier when Trap Boy Freddy put out the track Pick 6 with Yellow and Go Yayo, but didn't get a verse from his homie Mo3. Mo3 said he didn't care about the track. That's where the real beef between him, Yella, and Freddie allegedly started. Nah. Before they started sending shots at each other, Roy Lee was already airing out Yella on social media. Lee called out Yella over and over trying to run a fade, but Yella wouldn't even respond to him. Lee kept it up though, and in 2018, he ended up getting shot in the leg. It's not. Bro. No offense, no offense to nobody, bro, but you, you were a comedian, bro. You the comedian. You're not supposed to be trying to beef with niggas, bro. You the nigga that's supposed to be goddamn, you know what I'm saying? I said something about the nigga, the nigga ain't like it. My bad, nigga. Like, shit, I won't say no more jokes about your ass there. You feel me? You supposed to do some shit like that, keep the peace and get the money. You over here trying to beef with niggas, and you start real street beef and start real problems with niggas, and you're a comedian, bro. That's then it's just as bad as this shit starting over. Like, you said some jokes on stage and the nigga ain't like it, so you started going on his head for real and, like, talking shit on Instagram and, like, come on, bro. Hell no. And they caught you? No, bro. Not clear who was behind the shooting, but at first, it seemed like Lee was going to be fine. He posted videos from the hospital and let everyone know he was okay. But when it comes to gunshots, you never know how the situation will turn out, though. And two weeks later, Lee tragically passed away from blood clots in his lungs. God he had just performed damn. the night before he died. So everyone was shocked when the news broke about his death. What Nobody the was ever fuck? arrested for Lee's death. But rumors were flying that Yellow Beezy was involved. And just a few days after Lee died, Yellow was caught in a drive-by and got hit three times. A couple months after Yellow was shot, Mo3 dropped the track Word Around Town and allegedly sent a diss with the line, Word Around Town, and somebody got found. Slumped over in the car, body stretched out on the ground. While his beef in the city was heating up, Mo3's career was taking off at the same time. He leans up a boozy badass a couple of years earlier, and in January 2019, they dropped a remix of Mo3's track, Everybody. The song was already hot. The remix blew up and racked up over 100 million views on YouTube. Then a month later, Mo3 dropped a track, 219, and took his beef with Yella and Trap Boy Freddy to the next level. On the track, he said, In the city they talking, they know what I did. I hit up that rapper, you made him famous. Yeah, he barely made it, but went out again. He also talks about the 2017 shooting, took another shot at Yella on the line, Laws asking about a body in Fort Worth. Had my show, but I do not recall it. You heard that rapper got shot on the tollway? No, I don't. Who? What you gonna call it? <sighs> Niggas is tweaking. Niggas is tweaking. Niggas is tweaking. I ain't gonna lie. Niggas is tweaking. This this some crazy shit. Like, you can't just be, man. Niggas is tweaking. Why can't we all just get some money, bro? I understand, like, you know, but... Why can't we all just get some money? I know shit be happening. I know niggas be having to do shit because they involved in certain shit and they can't look away. You feel me? There's certain niggas, so you got to retaliate. And I get that. But we could all just get some money, bro. You done dissed this nigga like four times. And I heard Yellow Beezy's story, bro. That shit sounded like a nightmare. That shit sounded insane, so I don't look. Mo3 was always calling Yellow whatchamacallit on social media, so fans immediately knew who the line was about. Yellow went live and said Mo3 was capping about everything. He told Mo3 he was gonna put hands on him. Then said that Trap Boy Freddy had footage of Mo3 running away from him. Freddy ended up releasing a blurry video that allegedly showed Mo3 ducking him. 
but Mo3 said that's not how it went down. According to him, he pulled up trying to fight Freddy in his own hood, but the cops pulled up and everyone ran. By this point, everyone in the city knew about Mo3's beef with Yella and Freddy, but it was about to get even bigger. It's still not clear exactly how it all happened, but a concert promoter ended up putting Mo3 and Yella Beezy on the same show. Mo3 allegedly told him it was all cool and there wouldn't be any issue, but when he showed up to the venue, he ended up getting arrested while he was on IG Live. Yella hopped on social media, claimed Mo3 wasn't even supposed to be there, and he was just clout chasing. But Mo3 came back with proof he was on the lineup that night. The situation put them both in the spotlight, but not before long, everyone got a reminder that it was deeper than rap beat. Mo3's manager, Brian Rainwater, isn't a street dude, but that didn't stop him from getting caught up in the situation. One night outside of a Dallas club called V-Live, Yellow Beezy and his crew ran Rainwater down and stomped him out in the middle of the street. While the beef was getting people hurt for real, it also put Mo3's music in the spotlight. He dropped a collab tape with Boosie and was racking up millions of streams. It was clear that Mo3 had the skills to make it out of Dallas and leave the streets behind, but unfortunately, that's not how it went down. In September 2020, Mo3 allegedly got into a shootout at V-Live. He made it out and didn't get hit, but Trap Boy Freddy was allegedly shot. A couple weeks later, Freddy hopped on social media and said he broke his leg in a car crash. But Mo3 called him out and said he was just trying to cover up how he got hit at V-Live. I laid up in the hospital talking about he got in the car wreck. Boy, they talking about you broke your leg. Tell him you really got hit up. Yeah. Boosie's always said that rapper shit. He was on some hot shit, bro. He was on some over hot shit. He was on that bully shit. I could tell. Like, you know, a lot of shit be because you got to prove yourself in these streets. A lot of shit be because you never really liked this nigga and he finally gave you a reason to like you, feel me? But that nigga on some crazy shit. I ain't gonna lie. Like, that nigga on some crazy shit. RP Mo3, though. That nigga crazy. Their hometown after they blow up. But Mo3 didn't take the advice. Two months after the shooting at V Live, Mo3 was caught by a shooter on the interstate in Dallas and tragically passed away. It happened in broad daylight in the middle of traffic. Mo3 allegedly saw someone following them, so he hopped on the I-35 to duck him. The car kept up the chase though, and Mo3 pulled over to try to grab his gun. He hopped out of the whip and ran to the passenger side, but the shooter was already on him, and Mo3 had to take off on foot. He started running down the road, but the shooter let off shots and hit him eight times. A dude named Kiwan White was booked for the murder a month later, and the cops eventually arrested a second dude named Devin Brown. Everyone knew you know what's crazy? I think if you get caught for murder, like real life murder in like Texas, I know if you get capital murder, your ass can get the death penalty, bro. They don't got that in Chicago, okay? I won't let you be known. Like, they don't not have that type of shit in Chicago. You might live the rest of your life in prison, but I'm not gonna get the death penalty for it's crashing out. Y'all tripping out. Made it out that street shit, I ain't never gotta go back. No fun of great, cause that shit, wow. That's wild. R.P. Mo3 though, that's wild. Knew about Mo3's beef with Yella, so rumors started flying that he was involved with the shooting. Plus, it turns out that Yella and White have been spotted together in pictures on social media. The murder might not be that simple though. White claims he doesn't know Yella, and Mo3's manager says, Now, uh, Mo3 died from a jealous baby daddy. According to him. And the easiest thing for rappers, for lame rappers or rappers that just, you know, want to get a buzz real quick, if uh, if a dude rap, if a dude die across town, just make a diss record and act like you did it, and you'll get your streams will go up. He says Mo3 was mm -hmm. just messing with a woman, and her ex got heated over it. The case over Mo3's death hasn't gone to trial yet, but Kiwan White just got hit with almost nine years for a gun charge. Some people think he can end up testifying in the Mo3 case to get some time taken off, but right now nobody knows how it all play out. Mo3 was one of the most talented rappers in Dallas and had a lot of momentum behind his name, but unfortunately. He stayed in the city too long and it came back to haunt him. There's still a lot of unanswered questions about his murder and what really led to it, but we won't have any concrete answers until the trial starts. Rest in peace to Mo3. And that shit, that shit over crazy. I ain't gonna lie, that shit over wild, bro. I don't know what the hell going on in Dallas. Look, can we all just get some money, bro? That's all I be saying, bro. Y'all ain't even got each other. I ain't saying y'all gotta get money together, but can we all just get some money? Please, because this is this is getting out of like outrageous. It's getting out of hand. It's getting out of control, bro. Even in Chicago, Dallas, Florida, I ain't mean, gonna say Miami. I'm just gonna say Florida and goddamn New York and shit. Niggas be tripping.